Welcome to Podcasts, recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcast, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living. spiritual living. Ah, can we bring our wonderful selves and our attention this way? Um, Let's all stand together and sing our opening song. It's on your green sheet. Um, We say good morning to our Facebook and YouTube friends, and you all can sing along with us too. All right. Um, This is the season of nonviolence, and we know that we are the change that we want to see in the world. Yes? All right, let's sing this song together. All right, so we're starting with...
you, Kristen. Thank you, Paula. What a beautiful song. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Welcome to the Portland Center for Spiritual Living. We are a science of mind community that teaches spiritual principles to transform your life and make the world a better place. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. All we ask is that you stay open to the possibility of changing your entire life simply by changing your mind. My name is Nadine Muller. I serve as one of the licensed practitioners on the center's spiritual team. It is my honor to welcome you. If you're new to the center and in person, there are welcome packets at the back table in the sanctuary. And of course, I forgot to hold one up, but you could pretend it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for our global audience, the same information is available on our website at CSL Portland under the About Us menu tab. Either way, you'll find a lot of information about who we are, what we stand for, and how we might serve you. On our website, you can sign up for weekly emails that detail our events, register for classes, and even get a free gift on your birthday. So here are just a few announcements. Our Sunday service is in person here at the center and on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. Pacific time. You can also hear the Sunday message on YouTube and via podcast. This week's Wednesday night meditation is on Zoom at 7 p.m. And this week, Sylvia Kearns is leading the meditation titled Integrity. There are online Zoom groups for our social justice group, our 12-step program for women, and Spirits Lunch Bunch. You can read more about them and obtain the Zoom links online, cslportland.org. Our drop-in meetup connection circle will meet today at the back of the sacristy at 12.30 p.m. Uh, meetup is always a welcoming, wonderful discussion that is linked to our seasons for peace and nonviolence. There's no need to sign up for the meetup group. Just show up, and we're so happy to have you here today. PCSL has joined cities across the globe to host the 2023 Season for Peace and Nonviolence. This is an annual 64-day campaign to elevate awareness of the philosophy of attaining peace through nonviolent action. Booklets with the daily themes are on the back table, or you can download a booklet from our website. Um, a new monthly Lunch and Learn Zoom series is being offered by the Home Office on the third Thursday of every month, so join the Centers for Spiritual Living Archives board member and facilitator, Dr. Martha Quintana, to listen to and discuss a recording of Dr. Ernest Holmes on this month's global theme. You're actually going to hear Ernest Holmes, his, his voice. That's like so amazing. Um, let's see. I lost my place. Oh, this month's global theme is curiosity as a superpower. So bring your lunch and be prepared for a discussion about the thought-provoking and inspiring previously unheard recording of Dr. Holmes. And that will be this Thursday, February 16th, from 12 to 1 p.m. Mountain Time. So that would be 11 to 12 Pacific Time. These are previously unreleased recordings of our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. The Zoom link is on the front page of our website, and it's free to anybody who wants to participate. This is really quite a blessing to have. And now February 26th, in two weeks, we're going to have a town hall meeting. It will be a meet and greet for our new interim minister, Reverend Christine Green. <laughs> and this town hall meeting will be on Zoom, and it will also be live. So please come upstairs and join us. We'll have food. It'll be wonderful. You have time to ask questions. Our goal here is as we move into this transition, as we move forward, that everything is open and transparent. You know, you have board members seated all over, including myself, so if you have questions, please, please ask. We're here to help you and to, and to talk to you, so please ask. Um, today, our special features are LaRonda Steele and our wonderful Friends Band. <laughs> And our flowers are by Kat Jacobs. Woo. Woo. 
And today's message, Inquiring Minds Want to Flow, is by Reverend Christine Green, our new interim minister. So please join me in welcoming her today. So sit back and relax, because I know that somewhere between the music, the meditation, and the message is exactly what your heart came to receive. Thank you, Nadine. Oh, how wonderful. One more time, Reverend Christine. Thank you. Thank you for, being, for getting us rooted as we go through this transition. Thank you so much. All right, community, let's take a life-giving breath in and out as we center ourselves, as we enter into our sacred time of meditation together. We have a meditation song that you can sing along with me or simply let the words just wash over you and take you deeper into your heart space. say yes to one unified, complete, and perfect whole, one essence, one energy, one source, one mind. It is all there is. There is no other. There is only oneness, unity, divine perfection, infinite intelligence, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. All is of this one, every being, every planet, every atom. Everything that is seen and unseen is the body of God. It is love, 
life, joy, peace, harmony. All the qualities of God are within me because I am a part of it. I live, move, and have my being in spirit. And I know this for me and I know this for all. There is only God. And as we move forward into our lives today, we know that God is present in its entirety. We know that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And that when we go into this silence, even for a brief moment, we touch that part of spirit that is within us. We feel the tingling vibration of a life coursing through our veins. We experience the joy that is our birthright. And we know deeply that all is well. Grateful for this certainty, I release my word into the action and activity of the law. I rest in it. I bless it. And so it is. And now I invite you to take a few moments to commune with the spirit within. Welcome back from the silence. Mm. I wrote my letter, the desires of my heart, I listened to. A still small voice And there's been a shift From my head to my heart A new dawn, new day to start I've got a new day Thank you. 
Thank you, LaRonda, and to the band. Let's give another round of applause. Thank you. Did, did you write that? Did, did, oh my gosh, well, you just did my talk, so I have to find something else to talk about here. Um, it was beautiful, thank you. Welcome everyone, thank you so much for being here on, on this special day, a new day. And thank you for those of ho at home who are listening and watching. We appreciate you all being here today. As Nadine said, uh, our, our series this month is, uh, the global theme is curiosity is my superpower. By the way, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday, and so I'm gonna get you out hopefully before Super Bowl starts. So, um, so a curious mind is definitely a superpower when it comes to the discovery of who we are and the nature of the universe around us. Einstein says the important thing is to never stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. So I was reminded of this uh, story of little Billy so Billy went into his father's home office, and his dad was on the computer, and he says, Dad, um, I have a question for you. How was I born? And his dad said, go ask your mother. <laughs> and Billy said, Dad, I didn't want to know that much. <laughs> and so he said, no, Dad, seriously, I have a, a report that I have to do for school, and I have to know, how was I born? And his dad said, the stork brought you, so go outside. And he, Billy stood there for a minute, and he said, 
well, if the stork brought me, then how is granddad, how, how are you born? And he says, the stork brought me too. Now go outside. Billy stood there for a minute. He said, dad, I know this has you irritated, aggravated, and agitated. <laughs> but if the stork brought me and the stork brought you, how is granddad born? And he said, the stork brought him too. Now go. So Billy goes, next day it's school and it's time for the reports. Billy is so excited and he, it's time for the reports and he's got his hand up, teacher, teacher, me first, me first. And he looks around and he says, class, for the last three generations, there's been no normal sexual relationships in my family. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know, but today, inquiring minds want to flow, and we want to flow. We know that we are one with this infinite presence. We know that we are one with the divine and the presence of love and light and peace. We know that. How do we connect with it? And so that leads us in our questioning, what is my reason for being or what is my purpose? So when I was new to my spiritual journey, I don't know about you, but when, when people would say, what's your life's purpose? It just put me in a cold sweat. I didn't even like my job, and they wanted to know what my life purpose was. And so I was nervous, and I pondered, like, what is my life purpose? What am I supposed to, what am I supposed to be doing? And I didn't, I went from job to job, and here I was in a family that, you know, my dad had, in 45 years of working, had two jobs. You know, I had other family members that only worked for one company. And here I was with three jobs every six months, three new jobs. So it's like, what, what is this? And I got, uh, I read that book. I don't know if you remember that book, What Color Is Your Parachute? by Richard Bowles. Yeah, I see some nods. So it was a great book. And it went into detail about how to find your work. And it had exercises and uh, a flower with petals that asked all the questions. What do, where do I want to work? What kind of people do I want to work with? How much money do I want to make? I made a poster out of that. I made the grid for all my talents and abilities. But I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So when you don't know, you teach. <laughs> so I taught, I taught a class on how to do all the exercises in his book. But that, that, wasn't, that would still didn't feed me. It wasn't, my, it wasn't my career. And my goals shifted and changed. But then I was introduced to a different way of looking at it. It wasn't about what do I do for my purpose? But how am I supposed to be? What, what am I being in the world? And so it was a new way of seeing that and a release that all that anxiety and energy of not being enough or not knowing was released. What do I, how do I be in the world? Eckhart Tolle says, you are here to enable the divine purpose of the universe to unfold. You and I are here for the universe to unfold. How are we going to do that? We're spiritual beings having a, a physical experience. And so the, my purpose is not limited to what I do, but how do I connect with the divine? How do I make that connection? And we make that connection the bottom line is we're all here to be the presence of love, right? We're all here to be the presence of love. That's the divine. That's our connection. But there's other what we call qualities of God that you may connect with. Joy or freedom, peace, harmony. Those are all ways that we connect with the divine and that when we claim that, we allow that to move through us and to identify with that in the world. We use that as our identity in the world. 
So we have this, this awareness, and it's this expression of the relationship with that. So the purpose is the, my quality of God, how I direct that intention out in the world. And we all have that. It doesn't matter what we are doing. We have that ability to direct that, that idea, that quality. And this isn't something you discover with your human personality. The human personality will take you off in all these different directions. But it's really a question for the soul. What is mine to give this day? I open my intention is to be the presence of love, is to be the presence of peace, is to be the presence of harmony. Now, what the world calls purpose, so I'm asking us to take a step away from the, the definitions in the world to see this a little bit differently. The world sees it as what am I supposed to be doing or what's my, what's my work in the world? I call that a calling. So I have a calling. So my purpose, my purpose, personal purpose is love. That I, my intention each day is to be that presence of love then a calling is how we're called to use our talents and abilities, our skills out in the world. And so you, each of us has our own unique way of doing that. Some of us know what it is and may be paid for it. Others do not. You may have it and you're not aware. I have a friend who loves to serve. She just cut her vacation short so she could go be with her friend having surgery. So she left her vacation to go be with her friend having surgery because she loves to serve. I saw a news report about a ballet dancer who was a successful ballet dancer and then her career came to an abrupt end when she had a severe injury and she couldn't dance anymore. But something inspired her she went to school and became a surgeon. In her 40s, she switched from ballet to a surgeon. That's quite a switch. <laughs> but it was her passion. And she said there's an elegance to surgery the way there was an elegance to the dance. And so she just moved that into a new passion. So our calling, we may have a calling early on, and that changes over the years. And we may have a calling, and we don't, we're not even sure how it's being used. You are using your, your calling. You are using your passion and your calling every day. Whether you're caring for your family, raising a child, loving your neighbors, you are using that purpose and that calling in the world. I was in Florida recently visiting some friends, and my, my friend Robert is in charge of maintenance for a uh, development. And he was telling me a story about there was a, a tenant who was very unhappy. And she was always complaining that this wasn't right and that wasn't right. And so he was power washing one day, and she said, are you going to, are you going to, come over and power wash? And he said, yeah, I'm happy to. And then she told him all her complaints. And he stood there and he listened. And she felt heard. And you know what? She stopped complaining. And then the person who everyone avoided now goes into the office and everyone welcomes her. Because she's there now because she felt heard. So Robert is thinks he's there to do maintenance. He's really ministering to the people there. He's using his, his calling, his passion, what drives him to serve. Now, our work in the world is how we connect, our, how we stay connected to the divine. So our work in the world is to stay connected to the divine. What do we do on our spiritual practice? Are we 
maintaining a spiritual practice, meditating, journaling, reading, taking classes, that that keeps us connected with the divine. So our purpose is love. Our calling is how we express love in the world. And our work is how do we stay there? How do we stay connected? Gary Zukoff said, when the deepest part of you becomes engaged in what you are doing, when our activities and actions become gratifying and purposeful, then what you do serves both yourself and others. When you do not tire within, but seek the sweet satisfaction of your life and your work, you are doing what you were meant to be doing. Do you know, do you ever have that where there's something that just drives you that you love it, you love doing it, whether you were paid for it or not, and that you are that presence in the world? So when I was thinking about uh, this and who emulates that, I thought of LaRonda. Because doesn't LaRonda emulate love? Doesn't she emulate the presence of spirit? in her music and how she is not in fact it's not just LaRonda it's her whole family right her whole family has that gift and they they embody that and they live that so thank you LaRonda we love you So how do we do that? How do we stay connected with the divine? How do we stay in that, in that place? And what do we do now if we know that love is my purpose, what do I do with that? Or maybe joy is your purpose or peace is your purpose. What do I do with that? So I have three steps you can take. The first one, oh, before I go there, I want to get this quote in. Eric Butterworth said, A, the great truth taught by the mystics of all ages is life is lived from within out. This means the whole universe is concentrated at the point where you are. More than this, you are the universe expressing as you. You are the universe expressing as you. You are its living enterprise. And so it all starts from within out. We can't go out and try to grab it in, but it starts from within. It's an inside job. So where do we start? First step is intention, is to have an intention, is to wake up with the intention, I choose to live as love this day. I choose to live as joy this day. I choose to live as peace, harmony, whatever your quality of God is. I choose to live that this day. Make it a declaration. Make it part of your morning practice. The second one, now that you've set the intention, is to pay attention from intention to attention. Now, here's the disclaimer. The, here's the bad news. <laughs> Whenever you declare this quality of God, this presence of love, this presence of joy, oftentimes everything unlike that comes up and it shows up so it can be healed. So I remember when I, I declared after a class or a meeting that I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna use the presence of love, I'm gonna be that, and then immediately got into a fight with someone. <laughs> right, right? Or you go driving down the road and somebody cuts in front of you and then that's it. Love is out, love is out the window, <laughs> right? So we have to pay attention. We pay attention to where we are, what we're thinking, how we're, how we're emulating that in the world, how we're embodying that and doing that in the world. So we pay attention because when we're mindful, we can take that in and say, what do I need to do with this? How do I need to move, change this, move this? Who do I need to forgive? What, where do I need to heal? What do, I, what do I need to be doing in my practice? Where do I need to be paying attention? Ernest reminds us, the mind must reach a place where it no longer remembers the past with anxiety 
or looks to the future with uncertainty. Because we live in the present. It's not about the past, and it's not about the future, but we live in this moment of now. So let's take a breath in this moment. And that's all it takes, is the breath brings us back to oneness. It brings us back to that place of remembering. It's really, uh, it's really easy to be discouraged when everything unlike that shows up, right? And don't be discouraged. It's having faith, knowing that it's working, knowing that that which I choose to embody, I choose to share, I choose to give in the world, I am doing it consciously. And so even though you might have a day with bumps in the road, that it'll always turn around. Take a breath and start again. And the third step, so we have intention and attention, and the third one is gratitude. Because whatever we're grateful for increases, right? When we're grateful for life, when we're grateful for the today, we're grateful to be in community, grateful for my body, even though the parts that aren't working so great, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my mind. I'm grateful for love. I'm grateful for my connection with spirit. Uh, remember, Reverend... Um, or Dr. Casey was here a couple weeks ago, and she talked about having a rampage of gratitude. Having a rampage of gratitude where you just get on a rampage and find all the things that you're grateful for. It's really fun and exciting. You should try it sometime. Just get, start being grateful, thinking of all the things that you're grateful for. We have so much to be grateful for. But what that does is that that expands that idea, that expands that purpose, that expands your calling, that moves us to a new place. So I love this quote from Lawrence Kushner. We understand that ordinary people are messengers of the Most High. Isn't that true? Ordinary people are messengers of the Most High. They go about their tasks in holy anonymity often even unknown to themselves. Yet if they had not been there, if they had not said what they said or did what they did, it would not be the way it is now. We would not be the way we are now. Never forget that you too, yourself, may be a messenger. Isn't that great? It reminded me, do you remember that, oh, long time ago, Long time ago, TV show, Touched by an Angel. Anybody remember that? So Monica, was that her name? Monica would just suddenly show up someplace um, being a bartender, right? So then she suddenly became a bartender, but her whole job was to be the presence of love, was to listen and be present. So we can all be like that. We can all, we all are that. We all are messengers of the holy. So let's take this into prayer. So I just give grateful thanks for this blessing this day, for the newness in which we come into being, for knowing this purpose of love, that love is the embodiment of all. Love is the embodiment of spirit. Love is the embodiment of peace, of freedom, of wholeness, of abundance. Love is that embodiment, and we embody love this day. And so how grateful I am for this truth, for this knowing, for this greater purpose. How grateful I am for this opportunity to step in and embody love as the beingness of who I am. And so I know for each of us as we go out this day into the world that we take this presence of love and peace and beauty and we share it, we express it, we are that in the world. And that this love expands and it goes to those places that need it most it goes it goes to turkey and syria it goes to the ukraine it goes to any place of darkness we send this love now just imagine your light your love going out as beams of light around the world 
that wherever it's needed, it is there right now. And so let's send that love. Let's know that love is there. And so I give grateful thanks for this knowing, for this truth, for this awareness, and for coming together in gracious community. How grateful I am. I release this word in deep gratitude, and so it is. So Blessings. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very honored to serve as your interim minister. And what I want to do first is acknowledge the, the board here, the board of trustees. Would you please, would you, if you're a board member, would you please stand? And can we give them a round of applause? They have been doing amazing work since Reverend Larry left. And they have kept everything going and moving. Uh, the, the board, along with the practitioners, thank you, practitioners, for your prayer and your support. My work here is to help evaluate where things are at and to help the board and to move us into facilitating any healing that needs to happen and examine what's wanted and needed for the future. So we could say that our, we are in a sacred pause. So we're in this pause while all of this work is being done to prepare us for the next steps. Your presence is essential. While the board is here, the board is responsible for the financial uh, part of the center. You are the center. Isn't that what we learned during the pandemic? We didn't, it wasn't about the building. It was about that it was all of us holding this together. And so each person is a contribution to the collective. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this center. Because what we love most about church is connecting, right? We want to grow and learn together. And that your commitment to participate and contribute and be present is, is extremely important. So thank you so much. Please join us for the town hall meeting in, on February 26th. It's an opportunity to be together, to ask questions, to learn what's needed and wanted. Consider being a volunteer. There's a page in the bulletin. If you're ready to volunteer to step up and serve, please fill that out or see, see one of the practitioners or board members after the service. Because when we trust this process, when we work together and trust this process, we can do amazing things. And what is needed more than anything right now is a place that embodies a world that works for everyone, right? So, are you willing to take this journey together? Yes. Great, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And I want to thank you for your gracious giving because none of this would be possible without your financial gifts. We have this beautiful building with a mortgage to pay. We have lights and heat. We have a wonderful team that keeps us online, keeps everything available that you can watch this anytime you want. Um, we have musicians that are exceptional. Um, all of this takes, takes money. And so your contributions are deeply appreciated. So we're going to change this part of the service a little bit. We're going to change this, that it's important for us to bless the collection together. That, that no one person, it's lovely that one person can do that, but let's do it together. Let's receive it together, that we're giving and we're receiving together. Because remember, what, whatever we're grateful for increases. And so when we bless it, we're being grateful. So we're blessing it together. So I have a new little phrase. It's not in your bulletin. I just came up with it last night. So <laughs> thank you, everybody, for being so, uh, so 
so patient with me. Um, but I'm going to read it, and then we'll, we'll, you'll repeat after me. But I bless these sacred gifts because we're blessing the gifts that are given, that, that I am giving, and that everyone's giving. We're blessing it together. I bless these sacred gifts given graciously with love. We know these gifts are given graciously with love because whatever we give out with love comes back to us with love. I know these gifts are used to express great good in the world that the gifts that we receive go out to express in the world, that this is an expression. We talked about a calling. This center is an expression of love, of teaching, of a philosophy, of a world that works for everyone. So we know that this is expressing great good in the world, and it's returned multiplied abundantly. So let's say that to, uh, together. I'll say it first. I bless these sacred gifts. Oh, let me go back. Let me go back a minute. Yeah, please come up. I forgot to bring the ushers up. Please come up. They're standing back there patiently waiting. And then hold the intention of your gift. There's many ways to give. You could give online. You could give by check. You can visit our website for all the different ways to give. Hold you the intention of your gift over your heart. Now, together. I bless these sacred gifts. Given graciously with love. I know these gifts are used to express great good in the world. To express great good in the world. And are returned multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. And now, LaRonda Steele. Thank you, Reverend Christine. So, you feel like dancing and moving around? If you do, please join us with this wonderful Eddie Watkins Jr. song. Yes. <laughs> Not worried about tomorrow. Today I declare freedom from yesterday. Mistakes of the past. that all is well and unfolding as it should. I can change my reality by changing my mind. Perfect peace, joy, and happiness is yours and it's mine. I am love and so are you. Oh, and don't it feel good to know that all is well and unfolding. Let me hear you say, all is well, all is well. Divine Spirit is directing me right now. Oh, all is well, all is well, all is well, and unfolding as it should. Go ahead, Pete.
Thank you. That was awesome. So if there's something that you're holding on your heart or on your mind that you would like prayer for, know that our practitioners are here for you. That the, they, they will be in front of the platform at the end of the service if you would like a prayer. We have prayer request, request cards on the back table. Um, you can also go online. You can submit a prayer request at cslportland.org and it will be distributed. But know that you are not alone, that our practitioners are here to pray with you and for you and to know the highest good for you. So thank you. Thank you, practitioners. So now I invite you to stand for our benediction. Something wonderful is flowing through me right now. Something wonderful is flowing through me right now. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my affairs. I think it. I believe it. I accept it. Just the way that it is. Thank you, life. And so I just give thanks for this divine presence of love that was in each one of us right here and right now. Just remember any time, day or night, when you forget, you can simply go within and remember that who you are, you are love, you are light, you are loved. And so it is. Let's sing our closing song together. We got Miss Erica up here. We're going to put her in the middle here as we sing um, the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing. Lift every We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. 
The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Our inspirational service is at 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our podcast listeners. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.